Hello and welcome to Behind the Screen. I am JM and this is a show where we hang out, we talk about gaming, we talk about game design, and today we're going to talk about adventure writing. Specifically, we're going to talk about writing a one-sheet for Savage Worlds. Now, there are a ton of great Savage Worlds one-sheets that you can go check out on the Pinnacle uh, uh, website, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes, taking a note to put that link in there. Ian, good to see you as well, sir. Now, the thing about a one-sheet is it's a great place to get your start writing for Savage Worlds. You don't even have to submit them to Pinnacle. You can put them on drive through RPG. You can put them on your own website. They act as a great way to start writing and to show other people your writing and your adventure design. Now, I think what's really fun about a one sheet is how easy it is to do. When you look at a one sheet, you've got between 1,000 and 1,200 words. Generally what you will get on a single sheet of paper front and back with a single piece of art. Pinnacle has a ton of art resources. Go over to savageuniverse.com, look at how to uh, go to the get involved tab and see what what's available. Uh, under the different license. I mean, obviously there's a ton of places where you can generate art <clears throat> these days. And uh, Pinnacle has no, you know, prescriptions against using AI generated art. There's also a ton of free art online that you can find. So you're looking at one page, a thousand to 1200 words. The best part about that is if you set a goal of 100 to 200 words a day, that's a week's worth of writing. Now, obviously, you're going to want to edit it. You're going to want to play test it. You want to get someone else's eyes on it. But we're not talking about signing up for 80,000 words, 100,000 words, 120,000 words. We're talking about 1,000 words. And it may seem like a lot, but trust me. A thousand words, especially at a goal of, hey, I'm going to write 100 to 200 words a day. That's a great way to kind of get in the rhythm of doing these things. And if you want to start publishing as a game writer, that's where you should start. And so Savage Worlds has this great prepackaged way of doing it, the Savage Worlds one sheet. So before we go any farther, a one sheet is a complete adventure. Start, middle, end. Print out take to your table, run a game of Savage Worlds with it. It's, you know, what it says on the tin. It's a one-sheet adventure. Now, I said what's easy and why I love these. They're also difficult, not to be discouraging, but they are. They're difficult to write for the same reason they're easy. 1,000 words is not a lot of words to put on a page and get an idea or an adventure across. Looking back at the ones I wrote, in general, I spend about 150 to 200 words giving the adventure background so that the GM has a brief, short paragraph on what the adventure is about what they need to know. All right. Usually I like to include a custom wild card. You can do that as well, right? Something to make the adventure, uh, the, the climactic battle or the confrontation a bit unique for your world, your setting, your take on the adventure. Wild cards tend to run about 12 or 200 words to write up. See you, Rook. Get some rest, buddy. So that's 400 of your word count gone. The brief explanation of what's going on in the adventure and a monster or a wild card to fight at some point along the path. So you're looking at 800, six to 800 words to actually get the adventure across. Well, that's now even less. This is not the time for flowery prose, for tons of read aloud text. 
think of a one sheet as the skeletal frame of a adventure enough that a gm can pour a little water on it add their own flowery prose and get something interesting 600 to 800 words not a lot of time so what you want to do is you want to start one second allergy season in texas so excuse me so the thing is you want to start in the middle of the action or as close to the start of the action as you can you want to start if you can in media race or as i said right on the cusp of action i wrote a one shot or a one sheet that actually we played a little bit of on the iconic production channel boarding the train became the initial action scene for the wild cards first thing they had they had roles to make they had a clear goal of what they were trying to do now before we get any further don't worry about railroading in a one sheet two reasons one you don't have a lot of words you can't cover every option cover the most likely options that the players are going to have because again think of a one sheet like a module in the old school sense of the term one sheet is something that a gm can tear off the printer and drop in the middle of their adventure they're going to worry about the connectiveness before and after they're going to worry about whatever situations come up at the table your job is to give a clear concise adventure to go forward in 600 to 800 words after you've done your intro and your and your wild card not a lot there you go if you're real you're right if your one sheet is on a train then you're already on the rails might as well see see where it goes in general each component of the adventure i like to tag at about 200 words it makes the whole thing pretty easy to assemble and to put together so if you've got 600 words that's about three stops on the adventure three scenes if you will if you want to go to 1200 you've got four so looking at this we have three to four bite-sized 200 word chunks the adventure intro the three scenes maybe a little bit of an aftermath and the wild card 200 words a day that's not very difficult to get across what you're looking here is for conciseness and succinctness also you're looking at writing in the pinnacle style and i'll put a link in the show notes to the style guide um, they've got really great conventions for always writing present tense uh, one great piece of advice to new writers i can give is go ahead and do a word search when you're done for the word will take out every time that you find the word will unless you are talking about someone's will the, the mental uh, fortitude or someone's will the legal document you can save words by cutting that out the players will acquire the key just say the players acquire the key the zombies will consume the brains of those who fall now take that out the zombies consume the brains of those who fall it is one word that you can search for easily and trim down your white writing you can keep will wheaton in there third time will is okay if you're talking about a character short for william so what do you put in this adventure well first of all you want to have a clear idea of what your adventure is going to be about and again you're not writing a campaign heck you're not writing a multi-session adventure what you want is something that can be resolved in a single night maybe even uh, an hour or two a very clear tight idea so less 
the heroes have to set off on a great journey and travel through the woods in order to uh, find and kill the dragon and rescue the prince and more. You are in the woods at the la you know the head of the dragon's cave. The prince is on the other side. Shorten it down. Get the focus. GMs, trust your GMs. Trust your audience. They will expand what they need to expand to create the linking threads for the rest of the story. Three to four scenes, 200 words. Don't worry about putting in your mook creatures unless you need something unique to put in there. Use the style guide. Say, one Skelebot for every wild card or two Skelebots for every wild card and one coalition soldier per wild card. That's really it. That's two lines of bullet points to get across what your players have to use. Now again, you can't use rifts or deadlands unless you are writing for peg. But you can do a weird west or a post-apocalyptic science fantasy setting. Just file off the, uh, the serial numbers and don't refer to actual monsters in those books. So, how do I like to approach this? I got two to th I got three to four scenes. I don't have a lot of time. So one, start as close to action as you possibly can. If you find yourself needing space to cut, if here's where you start and here's where the action is, trim that back. Yes, exactly, John. Intro, scene one, scene two, scene three, wild card bad guy, a little bit of art. If you've got the space, add a little fourth scene, or if you want to put a hint for something that comes afterward, go ahead and do that, but keep it tight. So what do we put in those scenes? Well, I tend to like to include at least one combat scene. I mean, we're putting a wild card monster in there. Why wouldn't we have a scene where he could fight, the, you know, the heroes can fight it? Usually, uh, that's going to go at the end. Maybe in the middle. If you're really crazy, put it at the beginning. In that case, the adventure is not so much about defeating the wild card, but kind of what happens in the aftermath. Maybe they defeat a wild card and a curse gets released, and they have to stop the curse from affecting them or the town or the country. Probably town or local region in a, in a one sheet. And then I like to pick one other cool subsystem for the, the, the key stone of, this, of another scene. A chase, a dramatic task, a quick encounter, networking, interludes. Pick one other cool subsystem to use. So you've got a combat and you've got another subsystem scene that's two of your three that's either two thirds or one half of your of your one sheet already done and the beauty of it is you don't have to explain the rules you say something like this is a dangerous quick encounter parentheses see savage worlds and parentheses then describe what the quick encounter is this is a uh, challenging dramatic task the heroes have to accrue uh each hero has to accrue four tokens in five rounds see savage worlds one of the beauty beautiful things of writing for savage worlds is the assumption in every book is that we have this don't use page numbers because if you use page numbers and we get a new edition of suede that makes it more difficult. Reference the mechanic and just say the Savage Worlds. That allows whatever edition of Savage Worlds, your one sheet is still relevant. So an interlude is, yeah, John Doom uh, hit the nail on the head. It basically is allow, allows you to take time in the game to establish your character's backstory, to, you know, take time for a journey in a cool way as your your characters get to hang out and share stories about their pasts. I kind of want to uh, write a little supplement about adapting uh, the, the travel montage 
from 13th Age and Myth, which sadly, aside from one great quick start adventure, uh, I am biased. I wrote it on Drive Through RPG. Probably won't necessarily see, but adapting that to sort of the interlude mechanics and uh, yeah, I think that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, here's the thing, Padre. I think all of us as GMs do the one sheet, just not a, not in a formalized context, which is why I think it is the easiest way to put something out on in swag or even as a fan free fan adventure to get some writing chops, to get some feedback, to get some interest generated in your setting or your writing. Um, go ahead. Write up one of these adventures. I, I, I promise you, it. The, the hardest thing is going to be picking an adventure idea and committing to writing it. But if you think about it, NaNoWriMo, National Authors Writer Month in uh, November is a is a massive movement to get fifty thousand words written. This is a lot less than that. A thousand words, even if you give yourself the month, that gives you plenty of time. Right, write fifty words a day. In 20 days, you'll have your adventure. And that gives you 10 days to fiddle with it. I do plan on doing an interlude uh, behind the screen, and uh, we're going to be starting to look at different subsystems of Savage Worlds. Friday or Thursdays, uh, I believe we're looking at combat. So yeah, this is it. I don't really have a whole lot of other advice. Break it up into 200 word chunks. Adventure background and introduction three to four scenes, and a cool wild card. There you go. The wild card may even be the easiest place to start. Take your favorite wild card monster, drop it into Word, and start playing with it. Tweak it. Make it your own. Give it different hindrances, give it different edges. Change the, the trait dice around. Give it a cool special ability. For one of the ones I wrote, I've got a super-powered Wendigo as the bad guy. Um, because I like Wendigos. I really do like the curse of the Wendigo. The idea that uh, consuming human flesh curses us somehow. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So... Tink just said, quick math, write 50 one sheets every November. You could do that. That would be an awesome Savage Worlds challenge for NaNoWriMo. Yeah, I think I may talk to Landauer about that and see if we can't do something about that. Because think about it, then you'd have a little anthology of adventures. If we could get four or five people, we would have a large anthology of adventures. It'd be pretty easy to, at that point, talk to Bob or Tink and get some art for that adventure as a cover and who knows. Now I think this is interesting. This may be something I want to revisit later in the year. 50 adventures in the month of November. I mean, I'm doing Dungeon 23. We got to come up with a cool, catchy name uh, for a month of adventure design. Well, no, you'd have more time after that, Tink. But that brings us to the end of the one sheet. I hope this was useful. Um, I really do think one sheets are a great way to start. And if you get your one sheet done and you put it up somewhere, your website, over on Reddit, you put it up on drive-thru under the Swag Guild, let me know. Reach out to me through Savage Universe and I will write a article on your one sheet and make sure everyone gets to see it so they can download it so they can give you feedback speaking of feedback if this adventure writing tutorial for one sheets was helpful 
let me know in the show notes. Jump over on the Iconic Production Patreon and let's chat about it on the behind the screen thing. I think everyone can write a one sheet for Savage Worlds. Heck, as Padre brought up, you can write a one sheet for just about any game that you like. In fact, most of us GM prep wise, that's about what we put into our adventures. I mean, I put a lot more into my worlds, but that way I can do adventures like this having moved most of the world from System 1 into System 2. Ooh, nicely done, John. We'll talk about that if we can on... Uh, so tonight we have our... We're returning to our Crucible of Realms game. Looking forward to it. Um, not sure what the group is planning to do, but that's half the fun of running a game on the stream, is them surprising me. And me not being able to go, hold on, I need to go get a drink of water which gives me enough time to think about how to respond. It's all on the fly, but that's why I count on John Doom and anyone else in the chat, uh, those bennies that I hand out, because they keep the group uh, moving towards the goal and sometimes keep our villains a bit more villainous. See, Ian, that's a great idea. 51 Adventures, Area 51 style. Wait. <clears throat> Padre, you had adapted the uh, the Lost Barrow adventure for your Isle campaign. I really want to talk to you about that because I'm very proud of that adventure. On a complete side note, go out and check the Lost Barrow uh, for Myth, Tales of Legend on Drive-Thru RPG. Uh, Ross did the game design. Ross is now, uh, I think he's with Star Anvil Studios. They're going to be putting out some great uh, Savage World material. And I did the adventure. Um, I was very, we had this cool mechanic that I think I'm going to try and adapt to Savage Worlds, where basically, as you acquired evidence, we had an interlude scene, and the players got to decide, did they think the guy did it or not? And based off what the group decided, that influenced how the second half of the adventure goes. Thanks, Padre. I appreciate that. Um, I'm glad that it, it went well for you. So we'll be back on... Thursday with uh, our look at combat in Savage Worlds. It's going to be a brief overview. And for those of you who are interested, I'm going to start putting out some videos uh, on how to use the Savage Worlds Foundry modules. Hopefully those will start sometime in May. And if there's any modules you would like to see or specific components of the modules that you would like explained, let me know. So I'll see you all tonight on Crucible of Realms. And if not, I'll see you on Thursday for more behind the screens. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay gaming. Talk with you all later. Have a good one.